Yes people, what is good? I am BA back once again with another reaction in the Deadwood series. This is episode 4 of season 3 and it is called Full Faith and Credit. Last episode we saw the lines being drawn in the sand. First of all, obviously Al is already at odds now with Mr. Hoss. But then we saw Seth, I believe, get proof about the shooting at the gym which led him to confront Mr. Hoss. Mr. Hoss basically said you can't prove it, go away and basically beat Seth in the argument but what I got from that was now he's being attacked on two fronts by both Seth and Al so that was good to see but then it led to him talking to Sai and of course Sai being the absolute rat of a man that he is he was happy to bow and become Host's new accomplice and the other thing involving Mr. Host in the last episode when Mrs. Ellsworth presented Host stipulations in order to sell him 49% of the gold claim he turned into a dog evil person very threatening wouldn't let her leave the room etc while basically telling her that her offer was actually insulting and yeah just basically drawing them lines in the sand that is now Seth and Al versus Sai and Mr. Hust. I'm looking forward to this week's episode so let's get into it this is episode 4 season 3 full faith and credit let's check it out and see what it's saying to it I completely forgot to mention so in the last episode, the doc thought there was a medical reason for Mrs. Ellsworth's heightened mood. And then he had a completely messed up coffin fit in front of Trixie. I don't know if that's him becoming ill himself or just the situation overwhelming him. I hope he's not ill. Like I've said before, if this guy dies, this town is in some deep trouble. Yeah, he's basically coughing in every single scene we see him in now. This isn't looking good for the doc. How you feeling? Sleepy. This man fucking should at this hour if you don't mind me saying. I think he's feeling better than the doc just now, to be honest. I hope he's fucking dying. Unlike the doc, but I don't think he is. <coughs> I don't know what this is, but it's came on thick and fast as well. Basically over the last two episodes. Even Sai looked concerned for the doc's well-being there. That's when you know it's bad. Cheyenne and Black Hills Telegraph Company. No, this is two characters I would love to become friends. Do not kill me, I'm only messenger. Shut the fuck up and read the message! <laughs> it would actually be the best thing ever, those two becoming friends. I'm not saying it'll happen, but what an odd couple that would make. Is this the opening of the bank? Yes, it is. Well, this place is getting fucking robbed, isn't it? I've predicted this bank is going to get robbed long before it was built. They might go against type and not have it get robbed, but it's definitely a robbable place. I'm only Samuel Fields. Valediction is nigger general. Oh, the general. That's cool, he wrote her a letter. Hoping to walk with you a bit better to represent my intentions this day than the last. What a great character to bring into it randomly halfway through season three. My interest, to be direct, is in buying your building. What do you want to use it for? A theatre. Oh cool, he's going to turn the former brothel into a theatre. Was that the captain walking over to the gym there? What the fuck does Mr. Host want this time? Very much to be feared. I was just doing my job. Anyone doing some messed up shit could say that. It's the worst excuse ever. Do you want to try to change my fucking mind? Not only will I change your mind, I'll rip your whole fucking head off. The Captain vs. Dan would be a tough battle. I'd give it to Dan if there's weapons involved. I'm gonna kill that cocksucker. All in good time. I hope Dan does kill him. I'm curious about those tables with the numbers on them. Oh, well, they're for gambling on those. Who are these women? They came into town at the same time as the actor. Take over supervising for me while I give this young lady some private instruction. Just by how that conversation went, I've got the impression she's a hustler. You ever throw the bones before, ma'am? I've caught some. Oh. <laughs> she's got this guy wrapped around her finger already. She's going to give him a fucking heart attack. I should cut your salary 20%. Spent all that time on it and the jacket just didn't hang. He chose the wrong antler. You're running for sheriff to be a fireman. 
didn't hope to be second deputy in case I start a fire department. This guy's running for sheriff. Jesus Christ, he seems like quite a calamitous guy. It's definitely a downgrade from Seth. What is state of affairs in camp with regards to the horse? We never got to see if anybody was genuinely hunting them down except that one racist guy, you know, the, the horse ejaculator. If they come back to camp, would they be in danger? Save yourself the cost of a wire. Hey, the back in town. You think just because I happen to got a peppermint, it's yours by right? Of course it cut to a scene of him attempting to serenade a horse. That's right. You come to take my place away. I forgot he took over the stables after they ran away from town. Take a seat in that cell there till I square a place away for you. Charlie's always so gentlemanly when Joni's around. I told the man to fuck himself. Tactics or true position? I don't know. Yeah, why did she instantly just say, go fuck yourself? It seemed like a fair offer. Is it because she cares more about the fact it's now a schoolhouse? Is it because she's just hanging on to the idea of it still being her property and she'd just be once again someone with money but with no plan or property in place of their own? I tell you what I like. What I like is knowing these children are learning. Ah, so it's the schoolhouse thing. That's cool. What a nice thing it seems. Watching them little ones walk off to your place. He's got such a heart of gold, Charlie has. I wish once I could care for those little ones. You cannot hate on her decision at all if those are the reasons, really. Never fucking abandon the fucking horses to starve! Oh, here he fucking goes with his epic speech to try and make everybody hate the general so he doesn't have to give his stables up. The white man bears the nigger's weight around his neck like a fucking albatross oh my god this guy this guy really needs shot in the absolute face any time now would be great and they didn't take responsibility for trampling that white boy how long did it take him to actually bring up that point after his two minutes spiel about him losing his business and how much he hates anybody that isn't white he has appointed to degrade himself the open question is with whom? Who did he mean by that? Now this bank, however much I mayn't be good at it, I feel I married rather well. You definitely did. You made a good choice, Ellsworth. I ain't deposit. Oh no. Oh, say it ain't fucking so, you stupid fucking asshole. Now, now, now. Is this Trixie just working in the hardware store or at the actual bank? Do not confuse her with some paper palace fly-by-night. Ellsworth gave this guy a talking to. The banks have got slightly more customer-friendly since these times. I guess I'll try you out. Our hearts fucking leap with joy. <laughs> Trixie walking at the bank is amazing. How they fucking lie. Shut up! Thank God someone finally told him to shut up. I was coming to find you once I had the horse clean. This is the horse that hurt your boy. Again, it really wasn't their fault. Not gonna act against you for an accident. That's a brutal scene, but it's so good to see Seth make that decision. Steve's been looking after the place. Surely you're not gonna hand it over to Steve when they actively had to flee to camp. Does hell have to break loose? No. They all don't have to break loose. If I was them, I would present him the signed chalkboard that that guy wrote last season at this point. It was Bullock's horse as well. You know, Leon said that unsolicited. Oh, she actually slept with him. I thought she was a hustler. What is her game? We can do this again. She definitely doesn't look like she wants to do it again. Unless you would agree to building a new schoolhouse. Now that is a good counter offer. And to be honest, it would be quite shit if Deadwood closed their school to open a theatre. Theatre's entertainment, school is like necessary education. Hopefully this guy sees that and does at least finance them to have a new schoolhouse somewhere else. No one's here to fuck you, Steve, if you just quit running your mouth. Something Steve is not capable of doing. He'll talk to me through you or he won't get any fucking response. Jesus Christ. If you wanted to work there, I would be willing to keep you on. That's like Steve's worst nightmare. I didn't ask permission of anyone to look after that stock! 
And I'm not going to start with a fucking nigger. And just when you think, ah, you know what, maybe he'll walk with that guy and it'll be cool. No, no. He goes straight back to the racist prick side of himself. He did the purest form of nigger logic. So difficult to listen to. Again, I know it was a different time, but Jesus Christ. Someone needs to kill this guy right now. Oh, fay, motherfucker. Put me down to you. <laughs> you cannot blame Hostetler for reacting like that. I'm surprised he didn't just kill him. And I want to see anybody kill Steve at this point. He's the most evil person without any power in this show, is how I'd describe him. There's your size and your Mr. Hosts who are much bigger antagonists due to their overall power, but Steve is just the worst piece of shit at the lowest level. You'd say yes or no. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested if I had the means alone. Do not let this guy take over the livery, please. I'm trying to broker some settlement between Steve and Hostetler. Oh, I'll find you later then. The settlement was not really brokered that smoothly, was it, Seth? Might I ask you to speak in her stead as to something I believe we both know where she stands on? He said that in the most roundabout way I have ever heard in my life. New schoolhouse up elsewhere wouldn't. Miss Bullock be loath to leave the chef. Why would she be loath to leave it? I like to think that Seth's right there as well. I don't see any reason why Mrs. Bullock would be annoyed if they had to change the location of the schoolhouse. As long as there is still a schoolhouse, I think she'll be happy. One thought he'd engaged a room for you at the other end of the hall. I'm going to it now. What is these two's game? They are up to something. I have no idea what. Get your fucking head off it for all the fucking good you're doing down there. <laughs> I think this is about the fourth time we've held an outer monologue by Al while receiving fellatio. I only hope you don't doubt it. See? I wonder if the disagreement shake felt nice. Before my meeting wasn't to come and clear my fucking head. Not so much as to hear you say you're sorry, you stupid fucking mutt. I don't know if I was the most appreciative receiver of fellatio. Shut up and get out. Al will think she spoiled that, but he spoiled that for himself. Do you think I'm fucking afraid? If anything, Al might just be concerned about the future of things, not so much that he's actually afraid of Mr. Host. Do you know of a Miss Stubbs that owns the Chesame? Poor mistress. Not presently active, I'm told. Yeah, she's out the game, Al. Keep up. I thought you knew everything. Now lets her place as a schoolhouse. My impression, she donates it. Of course he knew. I was selling him short there. Some sentimentality, do you suppose, about the building itself? Might that account for her holding on? Perhaps it is a little bit of sentimentality, but it's definitely more because she enjoys seeing the children get taught, I believe. Don't know if that girl looks more happy she's no longer having to do that to Al or just bored. Titans gather. Swears in. Darling. Unfortunately, back on his feet. I think Cochran's a longer. Bit motley ourselves. Huh? I'm surprised he can stomach it. With his injury, those stairs must feel like a real gut punch. And he's a brave man, known for his intestinal fortitude. But it's nice to see his sentimental side, you know, whenever he sees Joni, he still gets those butterflies in his stomach. Okay, I'm done with a sigh. You've been stabbed in the stomach jokes. Officially done. Since I was 12. Since you can read, you may wish to examine my nameplate. He thought he was so smart with it. I've been writing a long time and reading a long time speech. Has Steve clear title? He will, once he's bought out Hostetler. This is a ridiculous decision. Hostetler deserves to have the livery back. Steve deserves to be thrown to woo's pigs. Upon his signature and submission of title to the livery, Mr. Bullock to co-sign. It's actually awesome to see that Trixie's loaned her accountancy to the extent that she is now able to work in the bank and do the accountancy for Miss Garrett. It's quite the character arc she's had. I've said that about a lot of people in this show. Quite a few people have had interesting character trajectories from where I expected them to go into where they actually went. Ah, uh, gentlemen, will you mind if I keep to this angle? Al is outnumbered in this room. Is not Mrs. Ellsworth a dynamo? Let's find one and send it to her. What's the occasion? I have my physician to see. Oh, fucking leave Mrs. Ellsworth alone. Sick at the stomach. Would you wish to leave now? <laughs> <laughs> nice, even Al's throwing out stomach shit to sigh. 
I am given pause by the quality of certain of the likely victors. I agree. If EB Farnham wins, I am definitely doubting the quality, but I think Sol Star would do a good job. Now, the guy running for sheriff is a terrible decision. You leaving? I will be coming and going. Is that straight out enough? Well, this is interesting. I didn't expect us to just disappear like this. Him and me, we've had our last word. Part of me worries that this is Sai and Mr. Host setting out up in some way. But if this is all as is, this is actually incredible. Sounds like a Bible study, don't it? He does not look well either. I don't know if it is just his back, but he looked quite poorly in that scene. Tars every fucking drunk with his brush. Anyway. True, Steve gives drunks the worst name ever. No fucking mistake. Just don't let it take off for boots. <laughs> These two are like brother and sister. You got a fucking sign. It's not the first time someone's wrote their name on Trixie's back, but it is the first time that ink has been used. Trailing clouds of glory. Do you read Wordsworth? I do not, madam, no. How do you come to ask? He must have heard the phrase without actually ever reading it from the source. The bone weary, but soldiering on Belgard as a soldier. I'm so curious as to what these women's purpose is in this show. Their game plan is shrouded in mystery still. Far as the schoolhouse and its costs. My obligation in that regard. It's such a drastic difference between this agreement and the agreement attempting to be struck between Mrs. Ellsworth and Mr. Hurst last episode. That was such a ferocious transaction, I expected this one to have some sort of dispute, but they both left completely happy, which is good to see. I'm not a goddamn errand boy, Hostetler, to mule this thing back and forth. It's true, they are making it awkward to get this done. Seth is having to act as the middleman. If I was Hostetler, I would not want to be anywhere near Steve, so it is completely understandable. Where the fuck have you been? I was looking for someone whose name you told me never to say again. Silas always looks mildly disinterested. I don't think Hawkeye's a douchebag. It's so mad to see that Silas actively chose to leave his position in Yankton to come here and essentially be another guy working under Al. They can just get nondiscriminately bitch slapped and have to take it. Tolliver, in connection with Hurst. As he's put his in tandem, fucking Hurst. Silas being in charge of this is worrisome for me, for several reasons, but I've got a feeling he might end up dead because of this. Hell damn gonna take your choosing me. <laughs> it's my fucking problem to deal with. Yeah, Dan is not going to like the fact that he asked Silas before him. But maybe it's because he thinks it might be dangerous, and he definitely doesn't want to lose Dan. She sucks my prick. Her methods deserted her completely. <laughs> In a bad mood with her because she gave a bad blowjob, even though she is the designated blowjobber. Everyone deserves an off night. I'm on board, Bullock. And you are looking at a grateful man. Look at him suppressing his ranty racist side just because he's basically getting what he wants just now and he's not even having to pay for it himself. Sign it! Steve has got a few necessary punches this episode but I want to see the definitive end to this guy. He actually needs a bullet. You know you hurt my feelings. Dad. That's the long and short of it, Al. You fucking pick Adams to represent you. <laughs> Dan will cut your throat, but deep inside, he's just a big teddy bear, isn't he? He just needs a hug, does our well, Dan? Me and him hadn't been through what me and you've been through. <laughs> Not by a long shot. I love his loyalty to Aldo. It's literally a blind loyalty. I, I could never see Dan double-crossing Al. We'll give it another fucking whirl. <laughs> nice, he's even made up with his blowjob lady. Agree on a time tomorrow when the dicks will be down. Have them signed simultaneous. It's a good idea, but this is getting ridiculous for Seth to have to oversee each step of this along the way. He's the sheriff of the entire town, and having them in the same place may end badly. I'll take the air, just briefly. I'll continue to be beaten at checkers. 
I hope she is okay. She seemed a lot more normal and balanced this episode. But then the doc's probably in no fit state to continue his schedule around everybody he needs to see in the town. You're welcome, wherever I go. That's cool, Johnny wants Jane to continue to stay with her. Is Moe's invited to the new destination? I'd think you'd need to widen some doorways if he is. To be fair, he's been pretty harmless since he arrived. He's basically just done his job and kept out of everyone's way. That they agreed tonight is no guarantee what they'll do at 10 in the morning. I just think it's ridiculous Steve is getting this livery. Such a asshole of a character. And he's the one winning in this deal. Is this number five? It's not the fucking bandage of the chair. It's you. That's changed the level of your suction. <laughs> <laughs> this is officially number five blowjob monologue. Whenever I think of Deadwood, I'm going to think of the blowjob monologue scenes. I keep an open mind in that area. Kid yourself about your behavior, you'll never learn a fucking thing. If this woman actually pays attention to Al, by the way, she would be the best spy in the entire show. She gets all his inner thoughts. I know what the fuck was next. When he chopped off your finger? And she does seem to pay attention. She's able to at least engage in a conversation about the subject he's ranting about. She changed her mind and and I was being restrained by that fat bastard orphanage proctor. It's the only time you sort of get a bit of his background as well. He starts ranting about his younger years. He'll probably, she'd have thrown me overboard anyway, but I don't wish to get to that fucking ship. This is some acting performance. His accent and everything is so believable. Considering he's a British actor, he is absolutely convincing as a tavern owner from this period. Okay, and that was episode 4 of season 3 of Deadwood, Full Faith and Credit. And I will be back in just a minute with my thoughts on that. So, full faith and credit, what did I think of that? Well, to me, there was two main plots we were kind of following this episode, and in between that, there was the big news that Horst plans to leave the camp. I still don't know if this is some sort of ploy he's running with Sai, or if he's legitimately just getting out of Dodge, or what his game plan is, but that's quite crazy that he's just up and gone just like that. And then we saw that the actor wanted to buy Joni's property from her. We learned that Joni is genuinely attached to this place sentimentally, and she really like seeing the kids being taught and stuff but Joni finally agreed when she added the stipulation that he build a new schoolhouse along with purchase that property so that the schoolhouse could just move to the new building and she seemed completely cool with that and a deal was struck quite happily. But the other thing we followed in this episode was Hot Stetler and the general coming back to town Steve obviously being furious because he knew he was going to have to give up the livery and then they had that dispute in the bar where Steve just started on his absolutely rage racist tirade again and Hot Stetler did really well just to say a few swear words and keep his cool otherwise and just get out of there because I cannot believe some of the bullshit that comes out of Steve's mouth for real. And on top of that, then a horrible resolution was struck when Seth offered to put up the money to allow Steve to purchase delivery from Hot Stetler. Yes, Hot Stetler is getting paid, but I know he would much rather prefer to be welcomed back into the town and get his old business back. It seems like Steve's winning out in this. He's not even having to front the money himself to purchase it. Steph's getting a loan from the newly founded bank and Steve's just getting to take this place. One of the most dislikable characters in this entire show, and I hope I see his demise before the end of this. Not necessarily above others like Sai, but oh, it would be so good if Steve met his fate during this show. And yeah, shout out to Mrs. Ellsworth and Trixie now working at the newly opened bank. It's so cool to see that Trixie has went from when we first saw her being quite unhappy working with Al to having the little thing going on with Saul to using that to her advantage to learn accountancy. And now that that's led into her being the main bookkeeper of the new bank, that's incredible. And the other thing I liked about it is it sort of solidified a bit of power for Mrs. Ellsworth over Mr. Hoss. That's one thing he doesn't have in Deadwood, the bank. She controls everybody's money now and that gives her a lot more power in this town in my opinion. But yeah, I'm kind of shocked that Mr. Hoss is just leaving like this. I mean, he seemed to me like he was going to be the primary antagonist throughout the whole of season 3 
Again, this could just be a ploy or a plot he's concocting to get one up on Al in some way by leaving the camp. But if he does just leave like this, I mean, there's pros and cons to it. The cons are, of course, he's an excellent bad guy, so we're losing a big bad guy. Quite early on still in season three, really. We're only on episode four. And the pros are, it's almost like him accepting defeat from Mrs. Ellsworth. And on top of that, it stops him being the main guy fucking with Al right now. Al still has to settle his score with Sai, let alone Mr. Hurst. But again, this could all be sneaky tactics or some sort of ploy by Mr. Hurst, so I'm not counting my chickens before they hatch, but if he is just leaving like that, that's quite crazy. And this show is the undisputed pound-for-pound pound champ of outer monologue blowjob scenes. I never thought that would even be an utterable phrase before this show. People give Game of Thrones shit for quote-unquote sex position. That is literally blowjob exposition. But the hilarious scenes, every time we cut to one now, it's almost comical the amount of times we see it and like I said that girl seems to learn quite a little bit while she's fucking doing the job down there Al gets his innermost thoughts out his strategy basically everything in scenes like that if she paid a bit of attention she could very soon be a second in command potential mind another excellent episode though season three has been amazing so far if you've liked this video click like subscribe to the channel to see more videos like this ring the bell to be notified as to when they drop if there's anything you want to talk about comment down below and share this around to anyone you think might appreciate it or want to watch these reactions along with us my patreon link is down in the description if you become a patron you get access to my blog you get access to these reactions i put on youtube a month and a half in advance and you also get access to full length versions of everything i react to so consider becoming a patron it helps me and my channel out so much and until next time i have been ba Peace.